I'm Aurora, your um, moderator today. I'm from the Civil Society Unit, and today we have our dear colleagues, Claudia and Lawrence, from the Economy Division, who are responsible for the multi-stakeholder forum. OK, Claudia, so over to you for the introduction. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And uh, my name is Claudia Giacovelli. I'm a, a program officer based in UNEP in the Economy Division in Paris, as Aurola was mentioning. And I'm the focal point for UNEP side together with uh, uh, Laurence Milai Canals for the organization of the multi stakeholder forum that will take place in uh, Punta del Este in Uruguay on the 26th of November in conjunction with the um, first. Uh, um, Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee meeting. The idea um, for having this session uh, with all of you was really stemmed from the fact that we were receiving a lot of interest and a lot of questions from uh, a broad range of stakeholders. So we thought uh, some of it uh, might be the same question with other people. So we would uh, gather you all to hope to address as many questions that you might have on the program, on the arrangements, etc., that concern the multi-stakeholder forum that will take place in a few uh, weeks in Uruguay. So just uh, um, to take you through uh, quickly, um, the idea is that um, we have, as you might know, that we have an event page where that we are updating on a regular basis where you can find all the possible uh, latest information on the event and uh, happy to post the chat in the link in the chat as well. But fundamentally, the with the UNIA resolution, the executive director of UNEP has been requested to organize a multi stakeholder forum in conjunction with the first INC meeting. And so that's uh, where we stand. The forum has really the objective to facilitate an exchange between stakeholders and provide a place that is not a negotiating space, is a safe, safe place for exchange between stakeholders and um, to share progress on uh, uh, current actions that are already ongoing and that can prove to have sh to shift the needles towards ending plastic pollution. The idea that is that during the forum, we will also give an opportunity um, for people to discuss and come up with suggestions on how the multi-stakeholder action agenda could be shaped, as well as discuss substantive topics that could be considered in the, um, in the treaty. The, the, the great thing is that Following the multi-stakeholder forum, the key messages and uh, um, highlights of the forum will be reported back as part of the plenary political sessions, most likely on Tuesday. So during the actual INC, there will be an opportunity for multi-stakeholders um, to report back from the forum and to have an, an additional engagement with uh, policymakers. So this is still under discussion. Um, the fact that there might be an additional multi-stakeholder dialogue session as part of the political um, uh, meeting on the Tuesday afternoon. Um, but the fact that the highlight of the forum will be reported back into the INC, that is for sure. So quickly on the agenda, um, as you can see here, you can download the, the detailed agenda from the from the website as well. But fundamentally, just to give you a nutshell, what we have tried to do is to really uh, maximize the possibility for exchanges between stakeholders, considering that we have only one full day of uh, work. Um, and the idea there to maximize that type of engagement, we have decided to, to opt for a format that alternates plenary segments with um, more focused um, breakout discussion, roundtable discussion, where people will be really able to discuss in a more uh, in a curated but more focused manner specific substantive topics. So um, the, the forum will start at 9.30 in the morning, Uruguay time, and will close at 6.30 on the Saturday. It's a hybrid format, which means that people participating in person in, in Punta del Este or online will be able to engage. 
particularly during the plenary segments. And these are the opening and what the science tell us from a system change to end plastic pollution and the concluding part that are um, basically these parts that I'm hiding on my screen. The, 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 the remaining parts of the forum is happening in roundtable discussions. So there will be one set of roundtable discussion before lunch, one set of roundtable discussion after lunch for the in-person participants. Um, there will be instead a virtual set of roundtable discussion organized uh, in conjunction basically with the, this first set of roundtable discussion. And the idea is that, and let me move to the more detailed agenda. So as you can see here, while the in-person participant will be or, um, breaking out for the first roundtable discussion in person, we will host a set of online roundtable discussion on Zoom um, because we feel that um, to have really focused discussion is not equal if you are online or in person, but it will be better if everybody that is participating has the same uh, access. So there will be the virtual, the participants that are participating online will join through Zoom and will have virtual roundtable discussion on the same topics that will be discussed in person. Um, one thing to highlight in terms of interpretation that might be interesting for some uh, organization presence today as well is that the the plenary segments of the forum will be um, with full interpretation, while the roundtable discussion will uh, most likely have at the moment no interpretation. And uh, we will try to, we are gathering already preference for people in terms of their language. So we'll see if there is a, a, a good number of people that, for example, uh, prefer speaking in, Eng in French or in Spanish. We will try to assemble them so that the conversation can be carried out in, in, uh, in a specific language. Um, at the end of the day, when we reconvene after the second set of round tables, we reconvene in plenary format. Uh, a rapporteur from each of the round table discussion will bring back uh, to the plenary the key messages that have been uh, um, discussed in each of the round table discussions, and there will be a, a conversation with the, uh, with the audience. Um, and finally, we would like to also acknowledge um, and highlight key actions, commitment and organizations that have implemented actions uh, that have proven to shift the needles towards ending plastic pollution. So we'll close the forum on a high um, ambition targets, basically on uh, highlighting what are those and acknowledging basically what has already been happening. And ideally, this would feed also into the uh, multi-stakeholder action agenda. So I think for now, um, Aurora, if it's OK, I think I'm, uh, I've already spent my 10 minutes for the introduction. Um, my colleague, Laurence, uh, is uh, taken in another commitment, but will hopefully join us also in the course of this session. But for now, I'm very happy to take any questions that you might have. And I will post in the chat also the links to both the uh, event page and, uh, and the agenda. Actually, before I hand it over back to you, Aurora, I would like to just remind everyone that at the moment, what you see online is the preliminary agenda. We have um, and you might have received already from Aurora actually a, a, a reminder that we are collecting inputs um, and suggestions uh, on the agenda. So we are hoping to collect all of those by today actually and then um, recirculate and publish an updated agenda by the end of the week, early next week. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. OK, so colleagues, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand or type in the chat function so Claudia can take your questions. Thank you. Yes, Elena, please. Hi, I'll just start with a quick question as an icebreaker, I guess. Um, so for participation, like how can we get an idea of how many people have already registered and also the share of virtual and in-person participation? 
for the multi-stakeholder forum, but also for the INC, the negotiations, if you know. So for the forum, the last number we had, it was before the confirmation of who will be sponsored participants. Uh, and we had around about 700 people registered for in-person participation uh, in total, actually, and 90% of them were supposed to participate in person. Now the, the, the identification of people that will be supported by UNEP with funding has been, uh, uh, the notification has gone out basically. And so um, we expect that actually that balance will tip. So a lot of the people that were hoping to be funded, if they are not funded, they might choose to then uh, participate online rather than in person. But at the moment, roughly, we would expect um, se between 700 uh, and 900 people, more or less. OK, so Tim is asking, how do you see, could you elaborate on the relationship between the multi-stakeholder forum and the reference to a multi-stakeholder action agenda in the resolution. Indeed, so with, um, as I mentioned, in uh, some of the roundtable discussions, the, um, the, the, the roundtable discussion at the moment are focusing on, four, on the four strategic goals that are referenced in the plastics um, science document that has been published for, as, as uh, somehow the substantive backbone also for the negotiations. And I'm happy to circulate that if you have not seen it. Um, but so at the moment, the, the roundtable discussion are focusing on um, structure around those four strategic goals. But within the conversation, we would like to also um, discuss and debate. So there are there will be some uh, questions that we would like to ask participants, and some of them will go into the direction of how do stakeholders see themselves participating throughout the process of the development of the agreement and beyond, and how would they imagine structuring the multi-stakeholder action agenda. So that some of these elements will be discussed already in the forum and will be further explored also in that uh, session in in session political segment for the on the Tuesday afternoon that we hope is going to be confirmed I just pasted in the chat the plastic science document that I've referred to at the moment we have an advance it's an advanced copy and uh, it should be um, finalized and translated in all the languages, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I have just one question. Um, I work for CTO, that is um, uh, Extended Post Responsibility Scheme for Packaging um, Paper in, in France. And I would like to know, um, just uh, I have completed the first uh, registration process and I would like to know if there were any specific uh, selection criteria for this uh, multi stakeholder forum. And the uh, second question, excuse me, you say that the answer of uh, this selection and this uh, registration will be revealed uh, the next week. Thank you, Baptiste. Um, so for the multi-stakeholder forum, the forum is open to all stakeholders. So um, I don't know whether you have applied for in-person participation or online. Sorry, I muted you, Baptist. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> in person for the moment. In person. So for the in-person participation, indeed, uh, the um, actually, Aurora, correct me if I'm wrong, but the announcement from uh, UNEF side of who would be the um, sponsored participants have already been circulated yesterday. Uh, and who would not be, who was applied and not be funded has also received the communication yesterday. With yes, regards, correct. And with regards to the forum, there is no selection criteria. We are just aiming to have basically a, a balanced participation between member states, private sector, academia, NGOs, etc. But at the moment we are still open and uh, registration will only close on the 31st of October. So if you have, uh, uh, there are, depending if you are trying to register also for the INC, the links are different, but if you follow, for example, the, the, the guidance that is on our website under the registration tab, 
you should be able to access the good link. Whether you want to participate in person or online. Yes, but I made the, the first step with uh, Unico. It's Aurora, I believe this is an accredited uh, uh, organization, so you are processing their their registration. Yeah. Decoy. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yes. If you have registered here under, you know, NGO, then we process that daily. Like every day, we process. So, if an NGO is accredited to UNEP or ECOSOC or UNEP um, MEAs, then you will be approved. Of course, with also the nomination letter and passport, etc. You know, the the correct documents, then uh, you would uh, be approved. <clears throat> that is for the INC. I'm Elena from the OECD. You also asked about uh, input and potential ideas for the agenda. So just to confirm, I think we've already made this point, but just to reconfirm, uh, we'd be very keen to bring some of our work um, into the discussions. Uh, we published this year uh, two um, Global Plastics Outlook uh, publications which look into, um, well, essentially they contain policy scenarios for the evolution of plastics use, waste and environmental impacts um, under baseline projections and um, well, different levels of ambitions uh, in policy scenarios. Um, and so as such, they can be, um, they can constitute a useful tool for policymakers, but also negotiators within the INC. Um, so if that's of interest, we'd of course be available to to bring that. Thank you, Elena. And um, a very good point. What we are trying to do, and this is a, a fruit of uh, many consultation and many conversations, um, we are not able to have standalone presentation of different tools or different uh, um, initiatives. Um, because otherwise we will be singling out. There is so much that is happening and we would never be able to really give the sp a space, uh, the justice to be as inclusive and give the floor to everybody to present what they are doing. But there is definitely an opportunity for you and your colleagues that will be present um, to use the roundtable discussion as hooks where you will then filter through those exchanges, the uh, the main points that you, for example, the main fundings that you had through the outlooks. Um, otherwise, it would be very difficult for us to manage uh, individual presentation for every good resource that has been uh, put out there. It just one day is not is not feasible. So I would really ask you to consider those opportunity within the roundtable as the time where you basically discuss and bring up um, the, the key findings from your outlooks as considerations for the group. Um, and also we are in, in the in the spirit of uh, wanting to um, really engage as much as possible with stakeholders and give a role to stakeholders as part of the forum. We are also um, looking at identifying uh, moderators for the um, uh, the roundtable discussions. So people will be literally breaking into three spaces, uh, consecutive spaces in the morning and then again in the afternoon. But then within those, within each breakout room basically there will be round tables where people would be sitting with 10 15 people max and discuss sort of a really workshop style and there there will be guided uh conversation and moderated by each of these tables will have a moderator and a rapporteur so um if you have uh willingness or you have uh, good profiles in your organization that you would like to suggest to be moderators, for example, or rapporteur for these specific topics, etc. Please don't hesitate to write to uh, myself and Laurence with those um, suggestions and volunteering uh, colleagues in your organization with those. We would appreciate that. And um, Aurora, I don't know if we can post in the chat also the invitation to comment on the on the agenda to then send comments to myself and Laurence. OK, sure, I'll, I'll send that reminder. Our team has another question on the chat. 
Sorry, just to uh, thank you very much, uh, Claudia. This was a uh, very useful clarification on how the roundtables will work. Thank you. Pleasure. So I'm looking at a uh, uh, team question. Have you considered arranging multi-stakeholder dialogues around specific sources, such as fishing gear, agricultural plastics, and or textile, for example, which could bring together stakeholders along the entire value chain to discuss what an action agenda could entail in that specific sector? So we had um, engagement with specific sectors yes for example the fishing gears etc and what the suggestion is at the moment is that would be up to that sector to organize and suggest what according to them would be the main element that for that sector should be considered within the treaty hope this is helpful Good morning and thank you everyone for having us here. Thank you, Claudia, very much for your extensive explanation on this topic that I think is very relevant. My name is Felipe Lasnin Victoria, uh, and I'm the Senior Manager for International Plastic Policy at Ocean Conservancy. We're one of the stakeholders uh, registered, and we have attended all the different meetings in person as well. But uh, we, we, like our colleague of, of OECD, are very much looking forward to uh, presenting and explaining uh, many of our resources, actions, partners, um, all the work that we do internationally. Uh, and, and we also would like to see maybe possibly the consideration of, I understand that given a space to every single organization at the multi stakeholder forum might not be the, the most uh, time friendly approach to this, but is it possible that we might one consider extending the multi stakeholder forum, consider just one day uh, versus five days of, of in person negotiations, or uh, just having one day of multi stakeholder forum, but then the possibility to organize side events during the actual negotiations in person, just in the margins, so stakeholders that might not be one to doing the room constantly during the actual in person negotiations can have a glimpse into the action of all the stakeholders that they're doing in, in, in a variety of spaces for many of us here. Um, I, the, the question that I had is, uh, are you considering possibly either extending for future occasions, I'm referring to for, for the future rounds of negotiations, are you, ex are you expecting maybe to extend the duration of the multi-stakeholder forum? That is one. Uh, and two, are you maybe also considering the possibility, and especially considering the amount of people that you mentioned will be attending in person, to organize parallel side events during the actual negotiations, part of that engagement of multi-stakeholder, um, the multi-stakeholder forum in general, uh, but specifically with side events uh, during in the margins of the actual negotiations? Thank you so much, Felipe. And uh, indeed, uh, so two very valid points on the future. So as you might have uh, read in the resolution, actually member states so far have requested the organization of only one forum in conjunction with INC1. So what we are hoping, we cannot preempt, but of course uh, we are hoping that there will be a decision at time for member states to decide. There seems to be very much appetite and willingness by stakeholders and by member states themselves um, to continue um, the forums along the side of al uh, alongside the next uh, INC meetings, but we cannot preempt that. It's a decision that will need to be taken by member states. Uh, we are of course hoping that there will be enough space for multi-stakeholder engagement also in the future, and even more, uh, because this is just the beginning, really. Um, so. I cannot preempt what it will be in the in the next INCs. We are hoping that the decision will be taken to continue. Um, then, in terms of the side events, um, I this is a question really for the Secretariat of the INC. But uh, at the moment, the position is that in this first INC, it's not possible in terms of timing uh, and uh, how small the Secretariat is at the moment to be able to manage uh, the organization of side events. What we have heard is that um, these side events, even if they are not officially organized uh, by the Secretariat or filtered through the Secretariat, there might be organizations that are looking into the organization of um, parallel events in an organic way, basically, even if they are not um, official yet, there is organization that are planning events organically. So this is what we have heard. What the, the um, 
because we have received a lot of requests, I think definitely for the next INC's consideration will be seriously given to organize side events uh, in a more structured uh, way. I think I can speak for on behalf of many, many stakeholders that we've been in touch with. Uh, that will be that will be a great thing to see. Actually, the secretariat and the member states uh, want to extend the multi-stakeholder forum uh, in general. I think that is very useful for this broad discussion, but also at the same time, the possibility of organizing a side events on the margins of this. I think that could definitely enrich a lot of the conversations and, for example, the colleague of, of the OECD and many others, I'm sure, in this call and further on that want to, you know, present to the public many tools, ideas, etc. Uh, many of the negotiators and stakeholders can definitely benefit from that. So so if if Claudia, at any point anyone asks your opinion, <laughs> I hope you I hope you support us. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Claudia. I believe it's really on uh, like it's quite important that uh, those opinions are also channeled directly to, by you through your, your relevant uh, governments, etc. because in the end, as I said, the decision is really in their hands. I saw a question from Olga, re-registration, got confirmation. I'm not sure about funding yet, and possibly we'll get confirmation on funding. Um, OK, not from UNEP. Ah, I see. OK, so you have. Right, so. If you applied or in person and then you're not sure you can also apply for online participation. Um, yes, in the same link. Uh, 31st of October. Um, yeah, I hope this answer your question. Olga? If I, yeah, if I may also compliment mm. to that Aurora, what I would suggest to all guys that um, yes, go ahead and uh, and register also for the online uh, participation. And then if you fail or succeed with your funding, so you decide in which uh, type of format you will participate, whether online or in person, please do send us an email copying Aurora so that we will delete the other registration that will no longer be needed. Thank you very much. And Krista. You have a question. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Krista Shunham, and I am joining from Human Rights Watch. And I just had a, a question about public participation um, and how particularly in the forum, there will be space for meaningful public participation, particularly for the people who are most negatively impacted by plastic pollution, you know, including indigenous people, people with disabilities, youth and waste pickers and other workers in the informal economy. Um, so specifically thinking about the roundtable sessions, like how that might be structured to allow for meaningful participation. And I know that you mentioned um, at the time, they're not expecting to have those sessions um, with interpretation, but whether um, the virtual sessions could also be organized, for example, by language, or if there are other things um, that can be done to make participation um, more meaningful for folks. Thank you. Yes, we have received actually confirmation that there will be so um, and Aurora knows this better because she's handling the registration from the major group of stakeholder, which includes also youth and um, way speaker, etc. We had quite a, a good conversation with the way speaker association yesterday and they confirmed that they intend to participate in person. They are really still looking for funding, um, but obviously the easiest way to participate is online and in the online roundtable discussions um, there will be uh, also um, a, the, the, the online roundtable discussion as well as the in-person roundtable discussion will be organized uh, as sort of mini forums as well where there will be one part where the moderator will be basically explaining the rules of engagement, then there will be a discussion on specific questions and everybody will be, uh, and then the rapporteur will uh, um, come back and work with the moderator and, uh, all, and the rest of the, the of the group basically to capture what the, the key messages um, uh, should be. Um, so in the parts that are sort of plenary where people are not just discussing in the little groups those parts we are hoping to organize for the virtual roundtable interpretation at least in spanish and french 
Uh, these details we are firming up as we speak, so I cannot confirm, but this is our hope that we will have at least interpretation for the virtual roundtable discussion for the the segments where people are together. So those we call them the plenary segments. And then we will hope, depending on how many people, also for the uh, virtual participants, we are gathering the preference of language. So we will, if there is critical mass, we'll be able to also organize the breakouts in Spanish or in French, etc. But this depends on the critical mass that we receive in terms of registration and preferences. We are really hoping, uh, I don't see any other hands raised, but just to reiterate, we are really, this will be the first, uh, the start basically of this multi-stakeholder engagement. As I said, I hope that this will continue in the next sessions so that we can perfection and learn from the experience that we will have together in Punta del Este and then improve it uh, um, for the next iteration, hoping that there will be. It appears that we do not have more questions at this point. Um, so if you or your colleagues have more questions, you can write to the Civil Society Unit email. I'll type it here now, and then we will channel to relevant colleagues and answer in writing. Um, also today or tomorrow, the approved um, major groups and stakeholders participants to INC, no matter in person or online, will receive a message from Indico um, informing you of a few briefing sessions for the INC one meeting itself. So if you're interested, you can join these uh, briefing sessions, which will start next Tuesday. Right. So um, I see Laura from the INC Secretariat here. Um, I wonder if you would like to talk to our MGS participants. Hi, Aurora. Hi, Laura. Hi Claudia. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I was listening very attentively to all the questions. Hi, Thank you so much for your participation. I took note of some of the questions and feel free to reach out also to the INC Secretariat. Um, if you have any additional questions, please do let us know and uh, we will try to address it as quickly as possible. And thank you so much for all your engagement and interest in the meeting and in the events leading up to it. Thank you. Oh, and if I may, so just, uh, I think Aurora, uh, it will send or already send a communication. There will be a series of briefings also on the documentation that the INC Secretariat is organizing. So everyone is also very welcome to, to take part in these briefings. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. So it appears that we can finish this session. So yeah, once again, if you have further questions, feel free to write to us and we will try our best to address them.